Hey there, X Traders, and we are going to do a small market recap given the volatility and the turmoil that's been going on in the market recently. So, this is an end of the year uh, for 2022. So, it seems Santa won't deliver a rally this year. The much expected yearly December rally seems to have skipped over 2022. Technically speaking, as you can clearly see, the S&P 500, as represented by SPY here, is on a clear downtrend for the year. Not only that, but it seems to be on the next leg down of this megaphone downtrend that it's been on. So if you look at it from the technical perspective, it's looking quite gloomy. And if we add the MACD in here, as you can see on the weekly time frame, even the MACD is curling downwards on the weekly time frame. Um, and if we throw on the RSI, actually is not so bad. Uh, it's near 40, it's 45. Um, so it's, it's, it's a ways away from the, the usual 30, which is the over uh, the oversold, and the 60, which is the overbought. Uh, so this is not really uh, telling us much right now. Uh, and But luckily, we still have this 200 SMA right here, this blue line that you can see. It served as support quite solidly here on this drop, and it will very likely serve as support whenever this comes down and touches as, you know, this 366, 365 level, which seems to be a pretty um, solid long trend support as well. So, um, technically speaking, it's clearly on a downtrend. We do have that SMA left uh, at a at this confluence point right here with that long trend support, but otherwise it's on this big leg down, and um, that is what has a lot of people worried. Now, on the fundamental side, though, this is where we run into problems. Now, there seems to be very little, fundamentally speaking, that might prop up the market. True, earnings were not so disappointing, but you have to remember that these correct these were corrected estimates, okay, which were cut down from their original levels. So basically, they met lowered expectations. Not only that, but there are many other macroeconomic issues plaguing the near-term future. The looming recession is as real as it gets, and some analysts are now even calling for that recession to be longer than usual. Um, and then you have the dollar, you know, which, as you all know, has gotten quite strong uh, during this 2022, um, which is also a big headwind for equities in general. Okay, uh, this is what it has done, as you can see. It's uh, uh, quite strong, so that's a big headwind um, for uh, a lot of the earnings coming up as well. A strong dollar is a great thing if you're like a tourist trying to buy things, you know, when you travel to Europe or Asia. But a strong dollar for companies uh, is not so good. You know, basically it makes their the U.S. company exports more expensive in those foreign countries, and. Uh, that means that U.S. exports will suffer even more than they have already been suffering, as can be seen by the growing uh, negative trade balance. But uh, that's not the only problem with the strong dollar. As the dollar gets stronger and interest rates keep going up, then foreign countries look to the dollar as a safe haven asset, which means the demand for the dollar goes uh, up even more, driving prices even higher. And if interest rates in the U.S. are higher, or even at the same level as in other countries, you know, but the dollar is stronger, uh, and it is obviously seen as a, b a better asset to hold as far as foreign currencies are concerned, this means that the dollar will go up even higher as countries invest in U.S. denominated assets. And if the Fed keeps its promise, you know, about holding those interest rates even at 4% or 5%, but for longer, as Powell has hinted, uh, then basically this means that the dollar will remain stronger and therefore more expensive for a lot longer than just 2023, which is probably why a lot of economists are calling that this recession is going to last a lot more than one year. 
And then you have China, you know, on the other hand of the world, basically coming out of a pandemic, whether they want to or not, because otherwise the demand destruction in, you know, to their economy will basically be unfathomable. And um, basically, as China continues to recover and grow, uh, this growth will drive the price of commodities higher. The reason is, if you think about it, China is one of the biggest, if not the largest, consumer of commodities in the world. Why? Because it is the factory of the world. You know, uh, everybody produces, or not everybody, but most companies, most countries produce a lot of their stuff in China. And think about what it means. I mean, basically, they consume the largest portion of all raw materials, such as precious metals, iron ore, uh, finished steel, grains, and other foodstuffs, as well as oil, petroleum. And as they awake from this, you know, awaken from this slumber that they've been in, they will demand e ever larger quantities of these commodities, driving prices even higher. So this means that in inflation is ver very likely to creep back into our economies. So basically, we have a technically bearish market structure and very bearish market fundamentals in the near and medium term. So sprinkle on top of that the fact that BRICS as a union is consolidating and gaining you know, more countries, gaining strength every year as more countries join BRICS, and you have the makings for a very dire situation for the U.S. economy going forward. Now whether this all plays out or not, well that's irrelevant. The problem is that investors are not rational. And every time technicals break down just a little bit, you know, and uh, fundamentals because on the worldwide economy are affected by things like geopolitics, well, basically this instills fear into the investors, driving the market into a possibly self-fulfilling bearish prophecy. So basically it looks like there is still a lot more bearish market uh, to be had and... Um, we need to learn to trade appropriately. We need to learn to, to trade to the downside because there's a lot of money to be made to the downside. So, um, you know, you better uh, look into that educational, education channel for more video lessons and posts because uh, there is a lot uh, we can do to trade in a bearish market and still be profitable. So stick with us and uh, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep uh, to stay basically you know notified and uh, we'll see you in the next one. So have a great weekend.